from the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Hello my dear friend and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Pastor Alan Bagg and we have been talking this week about discovering the power of prayer. Let's first read this scripture, yeah, our foundational scripture, Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Jesus speaking says, have faith in God. Now we also learned that according to the Worrell translation, it says have the faith of God. That's what the Greek implies there. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, he has the key, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Whenever you pray, amen, that means your prayers can be answered as well. Now that's good news, praise Jesus. I don't have to wait until I find, you know, brother, do dad, some great guy, and, you know, come and pray for me. I can pray. You can pray. Whenever you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, that's a promise from Jesus, that when you pray. Now, notice that when is now. The moment you pray, you've received it, and then you will have it in the future. Now, uh, that thing that we really concentrated on, was to understand that when you've when you have prayed for something, that's the moment you received it. Now, that's you know, if I can just spend the next three four weeks just on that point, I would do it, because I found so often when people come to me and say, Pastor Alan, it just doesn't seem to be working for me. Hang on, did you pray? Yes. Then you've received it. Yes, I know, but I haven't seen the answer yet. But Jesus said you will have it. Yes, but you know. I, we can't yes but around this. This is such an important point. This is the key to getting prayers answered. Janine and I pray this way, and we have seen it work every single time. It is the truth of God's Word. Now, of course, when you pray, you've got to make sure that you're praying within God's will, because without His will, you can't pray in faith. Remember 1 John 5, 14 and 15 tells us, we have this confidence that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we've asked from Him. Now, why is it important to know God's will? Well, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if I'm going to ask, I have to ask in faith. That's what James said. Whatever you ask for, you need to ask in faith without wavering. So to ask in faith, I have to first hear God's Word on it. But Once I've got God's Word, I've got His will. So you don't have to say, Lord, if it's your will, will you heal me? We already have his will. 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. So technically, if I go to God and say, Lord, if it's your will, please heal me, I've placed doubt on the sacrifice Jesus made. He paid the full price for you. He loves you so much, and he's given his word. We got the scriptures, 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes, you were healed. Matthew 8 says that he fulfilled the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying that he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We know in Isaiah 53 that he bore your sicknesses and carried your diseases. There's so many scriptures confirming that Jesus already healed you. So you don't have to say, if it's your will. But it is important to know his will, so you go and read those scriptures. You read it again, and you read it out loud, because faith comes by hearing. So you say, Father, I thank you. 1 Peter 2.24 by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. So I have been healed. I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. On the basis of your word, I believe I've been healed. Now the moment you do that, that healing manifests. Now you're in the will of God. Now it's important to keep your words accurate. Someone comes along and says, how are you feeling? That's not the time to say, oh man, I'm sick. Because Jesus just said, yeah, in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, you have what you say, verse 23. So if I say I'm sick, well, now I've taken the prayer, wiped it out, 
and my latest confession is I'm sick, so that'll keep working in my life. I need to say, you know what? Someone says, how are you feeling? Man, my whole body may be sore. I've been there. I've been through this. I'm not telling you theory. Yeah? This is exactly how I do it. I mean, my whole body may be full of pain and I may feel nauseous. I'm about to throw up. Someone says, man, you look terrible. What's wrong? They praise God by Jesus' stripes. I have been healed. You keep that confession strong. I guarantee you, you're going to see that manifestation within a day or two. It's a truth. If it's not yet today, it's on its way. And this is why it's so important to believe past the midnight hour. When that deadline comes is the most important time to stay strong on your faith. Uh, you know, if you remember Daniel in the lion's den, God didn't save him before he landed in the den. He was in the lion's den with all the lions. That's where God protected him, in the middle of his problem. Someone once said, yeah, but those lions weren't that angry. <laughs> you go and read that account in the Bible, you will see the next day when the king found him still alive, he said, what's going on here? He get, said, get the accusers of Daniel, throw them in the lion's den. And the Bible said the lions ate those men before they hit the ground. Those lions were very hungry, but God kept the mouth shut. Why? in the middle of Daniel's faith. Praise God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those three Hebrew boys who refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar made a statue of himself and he commanded everyone to bow down. and They refused. They, they said they're not bowing to any idol. They're only going to bow to God. So King Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you in the furnace. They said, well... God will protect us. He'll deliver us. And so they heated up the furnace seven times hotter than normal, took those three boys and the, the soldiers that threw them in the fire, they ignited into flame on the runway there. And so they looked into the fire and they saw the three boys walking and there was a fourth man there. <laughs> Hallelujah! Jesus himself had come to walk with them. And uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, I see the one as the son of God, the son of man walking there. Get those boys out of the fire. So they brought them out of the fire and they couldn't even smell smoke on their clothes. God had kept them, you see. Now what was their confession? We'll be delivered. They stood firm on that. Now most people, if they land up just about to get thrown in the fire, God, please, please, please deliver us. And as they went in the fire, ah, God dropped me, God let me down. And the next moment they're burning in the fire. No, no. In the middle of your situation, through the midnight hour, believe. In other words, if your landlord is ready to evict you, say, praise God. God has given me my need and I praise God for it. I remember when I was pastoring in Johannesburg, one of my the members in the area that I was pastoring, they phoned up desperate. Pastor Allen, they're about to empty my house out here. And uh, I said, what did God tell you? He said, well, I believe I have my money i have the money for my rent well then stand firm on that believe it they stood firm the sheriff arrived and issued the order and started emptying the furniture and they were in desperation i said stand firm i'm in agreement with you don't let go of your faith they said you know what i believe god has paid my rent god has paid my payment and while they were rejoicing and praising god someone pulled up in a motor car came over to them and said I don't know what it is, but God's not letting me go. He told me to give you this money. I was going to give it to you tomorrow. But God said, bring it now. And they came and they gave that person the money. They opened the check and it was the amount that the sheriff needed. They signed it over to the sheriff and said, there you go. Here's the money. Put my furniture back in my house. Praise God. You see, don't let go. When you think it's over, when you think it's finished and it's all done, do not change your confession. we got to stand strong. Believe that when you've received your prayer, received the answer to your prayer, that God is indeed bringing it to pass. Believe it. Amen. Listen to John chapter 15. Let's go there. Listen to this. This is a really wonderful scripture. John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, in other words, stay in the presence of Jesus. Stay worshiping, ministering Him. Stay in His faith. Stay in His word. 
you abide in me and abide in my words and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. See, when you stay in God's word, you know what his will is. See, I've, uh, there have been times I've asked for things and uh, haven't seen the answer. But then the more I've studied God's word, I realize, oh, hang on, God. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've actually asked wrong here. This is not your will for me. So I repent and I change. And the moment I ask according to God's word, it comes through every time. And that's really what I want to encourage you to do is when you're in the middle of a problem, don't try and figure out how to solve it and then ask God to bless it. Rather, what we should do is go and say, God, I'm going to ask you for a solution here. I've got a problem. What's the best solution for this? And spend some time praying in the Spirit. Just pray in tongues. Just pray. Listen to hear God's voice. If you haven't yet got the series, get the series on fine-tuning your spirit man to listen, to hear God's voice, and be listening, listening, listening. Father, what is the answer here? And He'll lead you in Scripture. He may tell you, go and do this or do that. This is how I'm going to answer it. You go, praise God. I believe I received that. And the moment you do that, you say, Father, now that you've told me how you're going to do it, I ask you in the name of Jesus to help me with this situation. And the moment you do that, God goes into action and he brings it to pass. Why? Because he just told you that's how it's going to work out. See, when you're praying according to God's will, it'll always work. So be sure to do that. Uh, the only time that Jesus ever prayed, Lord, according to your will, let it be done according to your will, your will was in a prayer of consecration. That's different to the prayer of petition. Everything I've taught you up till now is where you are praying a prayer of faith. Uh, when God said to Jesus, you need to go to the cross, Jesus went along and said, Father, I'd prefer to do this some other way. If there's any other way, let's rather do that. Now, I can imagine the Father said, Son, you know what we've decided. You've got to go to the cross. And then he said, All right, not my will be done, but your will. And the moment he did that, then... Uh, he consecrated himself, set himself apart, and he went according to God's will. So that's a prayer of consecration. That's when you use, if it's your will. The same as in James chapter 4, verse 15. In other words, I don't pre-decide my life. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go there. I find out what God's will is for me. Once I have God's will on the issue, then I can pray confidently. So you don't say, Father, if it's your will, please heal me. If it's your will, please supply this need. Find out what God's will is. God says, I want you to open this business. You open it and say, now, Father, I ask you for the provision. I believe that I've received it because it is your will. Now you can pray confidently and in faith, and that's when you will see the answer. Now, of course, everything I've taught you here is going to be challenged by the enemy. You understand that the devil's going to try and stop that prayer from manifesting. I'm sure you've experienced that. And so what do I do now while I'm waiting? I'm, I've, I've done the now I believe I receive right now. When I pray, believe I receive. And I know that it's only going to manifest sometime in the future. So now I'm waiting. What do I do in the meantime while I'm waiting for that to come? Well, let's have a look here at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And the Bible tells us here in verse 6, be anxious for nothing. Now, that's a good point to remember. Don't worry about anything. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, now listen, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In other words, now that I've asked God, from now on, I keep thanking God. Father, I thank Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Let's say we use the example in the beginning of the week where I said I needed rent. And then I say, Father, I thank you. From now on, I believe I have my rent. Same with the motor car. I believe I've received that payment for the motor car. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Now, while you're working, you may be at the terminal or you're busy writing out something or stamping. While you're doing that, next moment the devil tells you, yeah, but what if they repossess your car? What are you going to do then? Uh, where are you going to stay? They kick you out of your house. You just lift your hand and say, Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I praise you. Now, you keep doing that. 
you drive out the enemy because Satan doesn't want God praised. If he realizes every time he triggers you with fear or doubt or unbelief, you begin to praise God, he'll back off. Look at Galatians, uh, Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. See, always couple thanksgiving with your praying. Romans chapter 4. This is our great example of our father in the faith. Great father of faith, Abraham. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. That Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory to God. Giving glory, always worshiping, thanking God. Listen to this translation. Yet with respect to the promise, or that would be the word of God, Abraham did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith. The tailor puts it this way. And praised God for this blessing before it ever happened. See, when you thank God, it shows that you believe you've received your request. By continuously praising God, you keep your thoughts focused on God's word and not on the problem. Because every time you focus on the problem, if you begin thinking about the problem, that's your dominant thought, you begin to speak it and you have what you say. So we, we really got to concentrate. We, we got to keep teaching ourselves, praise God. If you need to, put labels up. Just put, I use little post-it stickers. Today it's easier because I'm, I'm used to it. But in times past, I used to forget these things as I had these little yellow post-its. Remember to praise God. I had my scriptures written on it and just stuck them everywhere. And every time you see it, you lift your hands and praise God. Lift your hands and praise God. Today what I do, if I'm believing God for a big project uh, like Janine and I, we're believing for our house. We're building this house debt free. We're going to believe God together for that. It's paid in full. God has given us the house. We believe for it in the name of Jesus. Now that's something that I pray for every single day. And what I did is I put up a little frame and it's in my house right now in the house that we're currently in. Every time I walk past it, I just slap that thing with my hand and say, Father, I thank you. I believe I received that in the name of Jesus. And right now, it's manifesting. Now, we've done that for five years. That thing's been on the wall. But you know what? It's manifesting. Right now, we're busy building that. And I believe it's done debt-free. And So God is the one that's provided that. So I really want to encourage you. It's, it's the way we've seen everything in this ministry managed. We see people's healing come to pass. We've seen God deliver people. Uh, we've seen everything birth has been as a result of praying this way. So I want to encourage you, friend. It's time. You have heard the word of God. Believe God wants to answer your prayer. Believe he has. When you pray, receive it. Speak it out loud. Begin praising God. Keep your words accurate and positive around it. Remember the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Speak words of life. That's how you choose life. You hear me at the end of every program. Life is a choice. Choose life. This is how you do it. You just keep praising God knowing that what you've asked for, you receive because He has given it according to His Word. Hallelujah. I hope you got something this week. And I want to show you how to apply this now in the area of your seed sowing. So I'll see you right after this. Alan Back Ministries is coming to your area. If you would like to sit under the ministry of Alan Bag in a live environment, he will be ministering in Bloemfontein this weekend at Christian Revival Church, the ministry of Pastor Ad Boso. If you would like to attend this event and sit under the ministry of Dr. Allen, contact us for any information regarding this engagement. Young and Unashamed will be performing at the Bay Christian Family Church on Sunday evening, the 23rd of December. It's time to turn the world upside down. It's time to turn the world upside down. Entrance will be free, but come early to ensure a seat. Be part of this evening of celebration with Young and Unashamed on Sunday, the 23rd of December, right here at the Bay Christian Family Church. I'm trusting God that people, young people's lives will be ignited and, and again be set on fire when they come to these events and when they leave, they will be able to impact and turn their world upside down for Jesus.
The Bay Christian Family Church will be putting on a Christmas production this December. It will be taking place at our Steenburg venue on the 19th of December and at our Helderberg venue on the 24th of December. These evenings are going to be filled with song and dance by professional musicians and performers all glorifying our awesome God and Savior. The evenings are free and will start at 7 p.m. But we encourage you to come early as these are usually our busiest services of the year. That's our Christmas production on Wednesday the 19th of December in Steenburg and on Monday the 24th of December in the Helderberg. For any information regarding these services, please contact us at these details. Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful service as we put God first in the year ahead and receive a prophetic word regarding 2013. The service will start at 10 p.m. and will continue into 2013. Through the years, God's been speaking to us, and again, 10 p.m., we're going to have the same thing happen. And I know that this year again, God's going to be speaking. Amen. Entrance is free, but this is a very popular service. So arrive early to ensure you have a seat. Come and hear what the Lord has in store for us for 2013. For any information, please contact us at these details. The Kingdom of God. God's system of operation in heaven or on earth. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he taught them to pray God's system of operation and his will to be done on earth the same way as in heaven. What does this mean to you as a believer? What can you look forward to? And what are you capable of doing as a child of God? These are just some of the questions answered in this series. This series will help you experience days of heaven on earth. Call 0800 Wisdom to order your series or write to Allen Bag Ministries. Praise God, it is another wonderful week of studying God's Word. And I know that you are now in a place where when you pray, you're going to see your prayers answered. Now, I want to show you how to put this into practice around your offering. As you know, on a Friday, we make it an opportunity where we can sow into the kingdom of God, to sow into the preaching of God's Word. Remember here, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now come down to verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now, we know from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, that every time you give a financial offering, it is sowing seed. So when you give into this ministry, you are sowing seed, the Word of God. You are sowing the ability for the Word to be preached. Remember Mark chapter 4 says, the sower sows the Word. So by you giving, it is a financial seed out of your life so that the seed of God's Word can be preached into other people's lives now that seed requires a harvest. And the Bible says that God is not mocked. The fact that you've sown a seed means God is going to produce a harvest in your life. Now look at verse 9. Don't grow weary. Don't get tired. Don't give up while you're doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I like the way the Message Bible puts it. Verse 9 Let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop. If we don't give up or quit, don't give up or quit. Now, I've taught that in terms of our prayer. Isn't that right? If it's not yet today, it's on its way. Listen to the New Living Translation. So don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and give up. For we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. So in other words, what we're saying is you sow your seed, you sow it in faith, and then you place a request on it. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Father, I sow the seed, and I'm asking you to help me pay this bill off. I'm asking you to help me get a car. I'm asking you for that job. I'm asking you for this healing. Whatever the harvest is that you believe in God for, place it as a request. Then you thank God. Say, Father, I know you're not mocked. And every time the devil comes along and tries to challenge it, say, God didn't really hear your prayer. You lift your hand and say, Father, I thank you. Galatians 6, 7 tells me you're not mocked. 
that according to what I've sown, I'm reaping that harvest. Thank you, Father. I believe it. And you keep doing that, you are guaranteed an answer from God's word. Amen. So if you are sowing a seed as the Lord leads you, there are the details on the screen. You're welcome to call us and let us know about it. And I want to pray over you right now because every seed sown here is used towards preaching the gospel. And I want to stand in agreement with you for your harvest. Father, I pray for this dear, dear friend of mine that has chosen to sow their seed today, that according to your word, you bless them, Lord. You increase and multiply them more and more. And I thank you, you are not mocked, that as they have sown their seed, that harvest is on their way. And I thank you, their faith not fail them, but they stand secure and stand strong until they see the full manifestation. I praise you for it, Father, and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, you've received that, eh? So now say, I receive it. Well, there you go. You will have it. It is the weekend, and we're going to get together to worship here. I want to invite you, if you are in the Cape Town area, come and visit us. I'd love to meet you personally sometime. And then also, if you're not here, go and visit with the church. Go and meet with the church. If you're already there, go and let the pastor know. I'm supporting you, pastor. I'm here. We're preaching the gospel together. And let's have a good time. And then next week, we're going to carry on with, this, with another message and, and enjoy God together. You have a great weekend. I love you dearly. And this is Pastor Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We want to thank you for your partnership with Alan Bagg Ministries. When you connect with us, you are part of many receiving their salvation. You are part of many being touched by God's love. And you are part of many believers being equipped to accomplish all that they are called to do. Know that you are being prayed for over every day. And know that we are in agreement with God's promises manifesting in your life. When you partner with us, you will also receive a partner pack that will both build your faith and give you understanding of the difference you are helping us make. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you are not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. If you are in the Cape Town area this weekend and would like to be a part of the Bay meeting together in multiple locations, please visit us online or contact us at these details. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can.